Hello there, I am Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, well, thank you for passing. And if you like what I'm talking about, you're welcome to put the thumbs up or the thumbs down. You're welcome to share and you're welcome to subscribe. Existing subscribers, you know me. <clears throat> I talk about everything underneath the sun. And today I wanted to let you into an insight little bit about my history, the mischievous side of my history. Every now and then I give you a little t insight to who I am, how I grew up, the kind of things I did, the kind of things I inv got involved in. And because I'm born of the Lover's Rock era, I thought I would talk a little bit about that, especially since someone sent me a video that threw me right back. And that's the thing about Lover's Rock music. It throws you right back. It throws you back in time. I don't quite know any music that does that. And why is that? Because that was the time we had the best memories. 70s, 80s was the best memories. The toughest of the tough got softened with lover's rock. You see a man walk in tough as nails and all it took was to just find one woman who could rub him up the right way and he'd melt like ice cream. That is what lover's rock was like. Lover's rock was like a magnet. People would leave their homes all hours of the night not knowing where they were going. They just used to smell the sound boxes. Rumours would say it's in King, Kingsbury, it's in Wilsdon, it's in Harlesden, the dance is in, is in Harrow Road. All we needed to know was the location. We didn't need to know the name of the road. We didn't need to know who was keeping the party or the dance. All we needed was a location. And somehow, we would find one black person driving around in the middle of the night and it was like the blind following the blind. We'll all be following each other until we heard the sound of the music and we knew that was where our destination would be. You know, those nights we would all give different names. We didn't know who was holding the party, you know, but we'd find a name that was common. My name was Sonia, my friend's name was Maxine, another friend was Sheila, another friend was, um, what was another popular name? Christine. You knew that there had to be somebody with that name and they'd have to know, oh yeah, she knows Christine, she knows Monica, she knows Maxine, and they'd let you in. And the place is cock. When I say cock, it's full and the weird thing about Lover's Rock is that women were not dressed in a seductive way. They were all covered from head to foot. The fashion then was long skirts, midi skirts, down to almost down to your ankle, and high neck blouses. The women were natural. There was no makeup as such. You know, and you know, they had their natural hair. There was nothing artificial. And what the magnet was, was the music and the body. The two of them combined is what made lovers rock. And the thing is, with the artists who sang lovers rock, they knew our story. They knew our story. Most of um, the people who grew up in the lovers rock era their story was full of pain, it was full of rejection, it was full of um, heartbreak. And what would happen, and it was full of two timing, and what would happen is the artists would sing and appeal to our emotions. And so when you were dancing with somebody, it was like you gave everything. Two people on the dance floor, strangers, 
became so intimate. It was, I mean, if they didn't have clothes on, they'd be making love on the dance floor. That is what Lover's Rock was like. You would wind up as though you was in bed. And then you would go right down to the floor and you would bend back. And as, as, as you are whining, the man is whining with you. And then if you've got a good partner, sometimes the two of you would tremble at the same time. Some men would even ejaculate when they were dancing. Some women would tremble while they were dancing. And when you dance and you got to that point where you're trembling and you're just like, and you don't move, you know, sometimes you're dancing and you do not move. And there's a part that all of a sudden might give a little whine or a little move at some point. But that is what Lover's Rock was. It told our story. And it was so sensuous. And it was weird because I've said it in a previous video. You would go to a, a dance, a Lover's Rock dance, but they used to call it like Shabin or whatever they used to call it. You would go to a Lover's Rock dance and you would meet somebody and you would dance with that person all night if those two bodies gelled. Because the moment was so intimate, it was almost like you knew that person and that person knew you. So you, the two of you would be intertwined. Nobody could put a piece of paper between you. That's how close the bodies were. And the way they meandered and gyrated, it was absolutely phenomenal. Sometimes, if everybody wasn't doing it, You'd get people just watching and saying, my God, what a nasty dance. But it wasn't crude and it wasn't nasty. It was done in such a sophisticated way and such a tasteful way, even though it was sensual and provocative. And you would find that a woman would go into that dance and find somebody to dance with. She would dance all night. That man would go home with her and they'd probably have sex the same night and they'd probably end up be ending up in a relationship from that point until this. I know people from the 60s who met in a shabine or a dance who are still together now. So it's not that they all broke up. Some people, that's how relationships were made. We didn't have to go anywhere to look for a relationship. In the days of Lover's Rock, you would go to a dance and from you can dance. You don't have to know how to dance, you know. Not everybody can dance, you know, because some people have two left foot. So not everybody can dance. But if you can dance, boy, you know you're going to pick up a man. Or the man knows say I'm going to pick up a woman. And that's it. That lover's rock done. It's done its job. It's, it's made a relationship. Which other music can do that? Now we've got a lot of people who have latched onto lover's rock, which is a shame. And lover's rock will probably die out with our generation. I don't know. I know the younger people still play it. And, you know, like my daughters, they're into it. And I don't know if it'll extend down to their children and their children. We do not know. We do know that the rights were sold off. So a lot of the artists never got truly compensated for their work. And you cannot emulate that. And the weird thing is, is that the music, if you play it today, it has the same magical spell as it had back in the 80s. It's only that now, with people being so reserved, you don't find that many women who want to wind up on a strange man in the way that they used to. And a lot of the men, sometimes they're not, the men these days, they're not the same. They don't get it. Because with Lover's Rock, it takes a particular character 
not everybody can dance lovers rock because you'll get some men who whine with a woman and they haven't got a clue about lovers rock. They think it's a way to masturbate. Or they think it's a way to get close to a woman and they don't even dance and the two dudes them are chatting your ears. Lovers rock, we never used to talk. From the time you dance, you could be dancing for hours. You don't even know the person's name. Until maybe when the dance's done, you go outside and you exchange numbers and you look up and you say, oh, is that person me I dance with? Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. But these days, a man will dance with you. If he danced with you too close, what in a minute or two, he's asking you a number and all that. That's not what it's about. It's not about exchanging numbers. It's not about having a dance and trying to get in with anybody. That's not what it was about. It was literally a process. And it was a process that didn't need any words. The bodies talked well, the music made the bodies talk and no words were needed. So when I'm saying that like now you go to a dance and they might play a Janet Kay and, you know, Gene Adebambo and Trevor Hartley, and they might play that music. But unless you've got somebody from that era who understands what Lover's Rock is, you're wasting your time dancing with that person because that person hasn't got a clue. Not anybody can dance Lover's Rock and actually get what's happening, can actually tell the story. I cannot imagine somebody dancing Lover's Rock today and ending up going home with that person and having a relationship because the dynamics have changed. But I'm allowed to play a few seconds, so I'm going to play a few seconds so you can hear what Lover's Rock is like, and then um, I'm going to stop it there. Girl, I'm on my way. Day day. It, mm. It, mm. It, mm. You're not actually moving. I know. She is. Oh. And it's true. You didn't even have to move. But I just wanted to share a part. I mean, I used to leave my mum's home and go off with my girlfriend. And we used to go to these um, shabins. I don't think I used to go to a shabin when I was living with my mum. I must have left my mum by that point. But we would go to places like Apollo and it was great. And Apollo, sadly, it's been running since the 1960s. And we found out that last week it's not opening anymore. So no more. And that was the place where Lovers Rock lived. Apollo. That is the end of a generation. Because it managed to keep that... Um, that vibe. Apollo was in Wilston, but it managed to keep the vibe all these years. When you go to Apollo, you have that same vibe as the 60s, only that it was a bit too crowded. It was absolutely ram. But it did have the closest vibe you could get from the 60s. It's only that the people are much older. And then they probably can't turn up so long and, you know what I mean, and can't whine in the same way they can't go back and them can't go down and all that kind of thing. Them can't do that. But they can still do their little movement, some of them. So I just wanted to give you a little insight into that because I didn't want to talk about anything miserable, anything, you know, disheartening today. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.